Grego's project is a three-hour hands-on paranormal investigation aboard the RMS Queen Mary. We allow ticket holders to be able to come and join us and use our equipment as well as participate in a paranormal investigation where we try to take a scientific and skeptical approach to it in using and teaching how all of our equipment works and how it works and what it looks like when it's working and what a direct interaction looks like and um, facilitating different methods of uh, equipment that is used in paranormal investigations such as spirit boxes uh, using the Estes method as well as K2 meters and cat balls um, to see if we're able to have conversations aboard the Queen Mary. When I say that we take a skeptical approach, it's not skeptical in that I don't believe in ghosts. I definitely believe in ghosts, but I will look at everything as maybe that's my equipment false positive. It's firing and it's not a ghost interacting with us. So I've always been intrigued. I think anybody who believes in ghosts is intrigued by that world and what that means. You know, what does that mean for the end of our life? Does that allow us to be able to find somebody to talk to? It's interesting. I originally got a job aboard here, the Queen Mary, and that granted me the ability to be in a haunted location. And you can't exist in a haunted space and not have something happen if you're there for a period of time. Um, and if you don't feel like something happens, something strange happens that you go, I don't know what that is. Um, so from that, I occupied the Queen Mary for about four months before I ever had equipment or the ability to be able to uh, try and investigate the space. So from there, it felt like I built sort of maybe um, a respect or a trust that somebody got to know me before I came in and was like, hey, talk to me. Um, that it was, hey, I already know this person. I trust or respect this person. Um, so then that may have made them more willing to come and talk to me. And that has produced some really interesting results. Um, most of my time on the ship, I tend to dress in vintage, and we generally find someone from kind of her glory days, and the way I dress is gonna be a bit more familiar to someone from that time period, and maybe that makes it more comfortable to interact with me because I'm somebody who looks familiar to their time and space. The Queen Mary is consistently voted one of America's top 10 most haunted locations. So she's definitely has activity here. Um, many people like to go looking for the death and the tragedy when it comes to finding a ghost. Um, there are 57 recorded deaths when the Queen Mary was in service. And if you're only looking for those 57, you're neglecting the almost 2 million who sailed aboard her from 1936 to 1967. So our goal at the Grey Ghost Project is to kind of share some of her history as well as debunk some of those legends and lores that have been told through all the decades while she's been docked here in Long Beach and kind of share her history and our passion for her and to help those connect with the ship but also the spirits who may linger here. If somebody would like to join us they can find us at greyghostproject.com. We have tickets available there. They are $125 per person, and that includes the three-hour investigation as well as access to the ship. That way they can um, come arrive on time or early and be able to see the ship uh, beyond just the investigation with us for the evening. investigating the Queen Mary since 2018, and I was one of the few that was very lucky, very grateful to be able to continue coming aboard during the COVID closure so I can continue my work and investigations during that time as well. Uh, what we do tonight is not what you see on paranormal TV. It's not tight t-shirts, sunglasses indoors, yelling, come at me, demon. We try to take a kinder, more respectful approach to what it is that we do, and we find that being her glory days were from 1936 to 1967, we generally find ourselves interacting with someone of a certain generation, and when you treat that person with kindness and respect, you tend to get the same in return. First piece of equipment we have this evening, um, we like to lead a skeptical and as scientific as you can paranormal investigation when it comes to something you can't see. And when I say scientific and I pull out these guys, people scoff and it's really understandable. These guys are K2 meters, they detect EMF, electromagnetic frequencies. Everything that we use this evening 
there's no magic formula that's been found for finding a ghost or a tool that is developed only for finding a ghost and that's the element that is a ghost and how you find them. Um, everything that we use tonight is being adapted from other lines of work, um, other implementations, um, and they have been found to have curious results when it comes to using them in a paranormal investigation. The number one thing that lights these guys up and interfere with them is something we all have, cell phones. Um, all of us have one of these in our pocket, and the signals that it's sending and receiving and trying to communicate with everybody sends those signals through the space and makes it do that seizure glitchy flash. That's not what we're hoping for this evening when it comes to having a conversation. That seizure glitchy flash is not what a direct interaction generally looks like. Um, what we're hoping for is a more solid bar of light. Um, when these guys turn on, they make a rainbow over to red. There's a second flash, ignore that one, but that rainbow over to red is more what a direct interaction looks like. When they turn on, they make that rainbow from green to red. It's a solid bright light. It fades over to red in that solid rainbow. That's more what a direct interaction looks like. Next piece of equipment that we have, gaining in popularity in the paranormal world, motion activated cat balls. <laughs> um, very simple, when they move, they light up. False positive these guys are prone to, they're balls, they're gonna roll, tip, fall away. Um, we're on a ship, there's uneven flooring, it's tilty, it's slanty. Um, so we've tried to eliminate those false positives as much as possible. I've taped the balls to a baseball stand, that way we can help stabilize them outside of floor vibrations, but for the most part we tend to do okay. Um, so again, super easy, if somebody is interacting with us, we can ask them to tap to interact with it, and that, woo, it's a good one. There you go. That tapping, that motion, that interaction with it, hopefully will set off that motion sensor in the ball and then it lights up and lets us know that somebody is talking to us. Could somebody be my cat ball wrangler tonight? Thank you. Red button is what turns them on and off. If you turn them off when we go from space to space, just make sure you've tapped that red button before you set it down. Mm -hmm. And that when you set it down, it's lighting up as you walk away. That way you know it's on and ready to be used. Mm -hmm. um, there's five in the bag tonight. Same thing. I'll let you know when we go into the spaces where's a good spot to set them down. Okay. Another K2 meter we have in the room tonight is on this guy. This guy's called a data logger. Um, the K2 meter on it, I've been told, is the hardest thing of my equipment to set off, so you will not see it go off outside of that outside interference. Um, when I turn it on, my finger is pointing to a stream of blue lights. That is it, and you'll never see it again. Um, that's the K2 meter on this guy. The bottom is a vibration sensor. You're seeing those orange lights, another way to tap to interact with us this evening. Up top is the numbers of the temperature displayed in Fahrenheit. Um, you can mostly ignore those numbers because it's not like an instant read thermometer. It doesn't turn on and just know the temperature in the space. It's very normal for it to tick and move around by that point degree the whole time we're in a room as it settles out to find the actual temperature of the space. Up top are four lights. It's the um, three different things that is thought to be uh, affected when there is a ghost in the space, something that they can interact with or change in our environment. Um, four lights signify that there is a red and a blue light if it senses a significant change in temperature, hot or cold. There is a green light for a significant change in humidity and what I used to call my sassy yellow light for a significant change in pressure. The reason I used to call it my sassy yellow light is for whatever reason, in a post-COVID world, in a reopening of the ship, this yellow light is the only thing on my equipment going off with any sort of frequency. This is your guys' investigation, so I do want you guys to participate to your comfort level. Um, I just ask that you try to be mindful of uh, present tense. We find that when we put questions in a past tense, that can lead to confusion and stop conversations. Um, so it's not, did you work here, but rather, do you work here? Um, that can help have better conversations for us as opposed to adding any confusion. Alrighty. Sorry for the shuffle if you're here with us. My friends are listening to the radio there. Our battery died. It's always sad when the right radio battery dies, isn't it? Um, feel free to jump in, ask questions. Um, favorite color, favorite food? Groceries. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do for fun? Um, feel free to jump in.
Is there anyone in this space that's willing to talk to us tonight? We're here on the bridge. Everyone! I know there's a lot of us tonight. Does it feel a little crowded this evening? Are you nervous? Feeling. Thank you. Are there any celebrities aboard today? Do not. I know we have some extra cameras in the room tonight. I hope they don't intimidate you. Acorn. Radio gibberish. <laughs> We're just hoping to get to know you if you're willing. Or if there's anything we can do for you. Sorry? We're listening. Is there just a to me? Just you. I'll try just a gentleman. Big? Go ahead. Whoever had started to ask. Yeah. Is there a gentleman here tonight? Do you spend a lot of time in this space? Myself? Do you spend a lot of time alone? Family? Do you have any children? Eleven thirty. And because we're out of time that we are okay to leave and that we will be leaving, I'll put this out here. Do you want us to leave? Video. We're going to grab our things and go to our next spot. And you're welcome to come along with us. If we found anyone in this space, you're welcome to join us tonight. Us. You're welcome to join us. Follow along. We'll grab our things. I would. We'll Adam. Will you come back tomorrow too? Is your name Adam? Yellow light. You'll come back tomorrow too? Thank you. Yellow light. All right. Talk to you tomorrow, friend. Thank you. So once again, I'm Becca. And I'll have my friends say hello so that you know who you're talking to. Go ahead, guys. Uh, hi, I'm Jake. I'm listening if you're talking. I'm Robbie. Robbie? Yeah. Robbie and Jake. Um, blindfolds, headphones, anything you hear, say loud, say clear. Copy that. <laughs> Robbie and Jake are going to be listening if you'd like to talk to us. My friends have a couple extra cameras here tonight. Not to put you on the spot or intimidate you in any way. They're just curious about you and would love to get to know you. All my friends with the cameras say hi. Hello. How you doing? And what's your name again? My name is Noah. I'm Lindsay. Oh, uh, that's. <laughs> what's your name? What's Why? That? Go ahead, ask, uh, why do you want to know their name? We would like to get to know you. Light. What are your feelings about that green light, the green dot grid? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Would you prefer if I turned it off? The 
is my friend here tonight. Do you like the dark? Did I? Why me? You're honest. Are you confused on what's going on right now? Back up. Do you like getting visitors? Having these conversations? If you're quick. <laughs> <laughs> We're generally pretty quick, I would say. Is that a fair assessment? What can you tell us about this part of the ship? Ask me. Ask me. Um, do I have anybody else that wants to give Estes a try? The headphones, the radio? All right, then I'll keep them in for a bit. Unless somebody wants to try. Over it. <laughs> <laughs> they are over it, aren't they? Usually more people want to do this, huh? What tool do you use? Me. Can you hear us? No. <laughs> Excuse me. Can you hear us? Are we in the way of important work? Photo. Is it too dangerous? I know. Is it too dangerous for a lady to be down here? Just took a photo. Did you just take a photo? <laughs> yeah, I just switched back from photo to video. <laughs> Did you pose? Strike a pose. <laughs> for once. <laughs> for. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Did you like that I was taking pictures? Thank you. You're welcome to come along with us to our next spot. You can continue to talk to us if you'd like. Yes. Okay. Come along. Join us. Um, you had bits and pieces of words that made sense for that whole time. Mm. Um, we also had a couple yellow lights as well. Um, but, uh, the only thing that I had is when certain words came through it, like it got really cold on my knees and that was it. There was a moment that I saw you do that as if someone was by you instead. Yeah. And I was like, hey, if you're not, because if you're not interacting at the yellow light over there, understandably, because you're over by my friend over here. Um, so we tried to play with that too. Um, he also switched to photos and that's when you said photo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we were like, are you over by him and you're posing for a photo? Is that what happened? Welcome back everyone to the first class swimming pool. Uh, many people like to come and have to be the first class swimming pool. It's on the end of the three buckets because of the legend of Jack. It's been said since the 1970s that there was a little girl who drowned in the swimming pool. Um, being that she's a ship with the impeccable records and laws, there is no reported death happening. Resist the urge. Mark! 
Marco. Polo, good job. Oh my goodness. That's the first time that's happened. Thank you. You want to play Marco Polo? Do you want to play Marco Polo again? Okay. Will you do it if somebody else says Marco? Do you prefer being Polo? Do you like the teddy bear? Do you like playing with the pretty lights? We are in our fourth and final location, room B340. If there is one of the lights that I have brought, one of the devices that I've brought, if you're tapping the green light over here, I appreciate that. Are you able to make it go over to red if that was you? Make it do the rainbow all the way across to red. Hey there. Hello. Maybe you can step on one of those. I'll light up a fun little disco party over there. Step on one. That should trigger the sensor. Don't be afraid of me. That should trigger the sensor. To make it light up and let us know that you're talking to us. Door. No. Through the door in the closet. Are you able to step on one of those? Nervous. Don't question about it. I know we have more cameras here than usual tonight. We're just curious and would love to get to know you. Billy Jean? <laughs> <laughs> I tried you. Um is your nickname that we can call you Billy Jean? Rocket ship. In a bottle? <laughs> Let's just name all the songs now. <laughs> I can hear you. Who can hear me? I think that... Welcome back, Deja Vu. It's broken. What's broken, friend? Are my devices broken? And that's why only the yellow Dreams? Light, only the yellow light works. Thank you. They don't work at all. You can't light them up at all, so they're broken. <laughs> I can tell. If that's you, Deja Vu. I can come out? Not <laughs> where you are. Deja Vu, if you've been at the yellow light, can you tap it again to confirm, please? My friends are going to go home. If you've been following us around the ship, thank you, but this is where we're going to part ways. I'll be back tomorrow or tonight, considering how you treat midnight. I'll bring new friends, I'll bring the devices again, right. and that yellow light, you can tap that to say hello tomorrow and we can have a conversation again. But for tonight, we've got to be on our way. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you for your time, your space, your energy. But as I always say, y'all stay here. <laughs>